Okay, today I want to talk about something I kind of got from Darren Miller. He gave me the lead on it, and I kind of ran with it and figured it out. And uh, let's talk about that for a little bit. I've spent the last 30 plus years working on race cars, building race cars, and racing cars. And I'm here to help you better understand racing technology. When I started hanging out with Darren Miller, I actually didn't hang out with him. We uh, had him work on one of our cars, and I got to go kind of assist him in it. But he said if he was still racing, he would be working on combining a fifth and sixth coil and creating a central pivot in the middle of the car. See what happens is when you have a fifth and sixth coil, the chassis attitude, because those things are spread apart on the chassis, even though you preload one and you preload the other and they're kind of preloaded into each other, there might be a place where that preload comes out a little bit or the preload isn't always consistent. So, and it makes sense, the best thing to do is to combine those two and put a fifth and a sixth coil all on the same shock. Put a single unit in the middle of the car and you're basically done. We used to have to like when you're done scaling, you preload the fifth coil a quarter inch and that kind of put a uh, basically a preload into both of them. But combining the two, you never had to preload the fifth and sixth coil. It was always preloaded against each other. So there was no adjusting the fifth or sixth coil. There was no guesswork as to how much and what does what. It was always just preset. You got done scaling and you never had to preload it. Plus, in the middle of the car, when those things are spread apart, and your car rolls and dives and lifts, there comes a point where those, the preload nose, aren't exactly always set. If you preload it with a certain spring, and a certain spring for a six coil, and it's all preloaded in one unit, you have one pivot, that pivot, can, that car can move around under one pivot. And you never have to second guess your preload in either one of them. It's always cons very consistent. That kind of gets back to the old thing that Rayburn had years ago. He, I think it was uh, mid 2000s someplace. He came up with what he called a push and pull deal, and uh, I loved his Rayburn cars when he would run a pull rod with a six coil. We ran one for years and it was just an awesome car. We actually created our own car to put a six coil in the middle of the car and a fifth coil or a pull rod in it just like he did. When, you, when he did that push and pull deal where it was two pull rods back to back, now think about the, the pivot radius on those things. The back end of your car moves around and raises and lowers. The pivots either get closer together and they lose their preload or they get further apart and they, both springs want a coil bind or put a bind in the middle of the car. That's why I never agreed with and never thought that that push-pull deal that he had was that great. Just because... There was no consistency there. You'd lose your preload or you would gain too much preload if the car was trying to roll or dive and lift. You'd actually, it was very inconsistent. Schlieper had a car when he first started driving for us. He had a car just before that that, that, that push-pull deal was on. He said the traction was horrible on it. 
But I think the traction was horrible, not because it was anything else. You know, people were blaming shocks and everything else. But it was because there was slack created in that push-pull deal. And it would jerk the tires loose. And it basically suffered for traction. So let's go over on the drawing board and we'll look at some drawings I already put together. And I'll explain some stuff over there. Okay, the first thing I want to show you is the typical 5th and 6th coil deal. See, the problem with this is, is when you separate the two, as this rear end goes up or down, this can actually load or unload and preload. You would think more of it because the front pivot is off the sixth coil, that would actually tend to load and unload the fifth coil a little bit more, make this inconsistent. And then people are all about now shortening up the fifth coil length. They're moving their fifth coil all the way back or further back than they used to years ago, which puts a separation between these two bigger. So as the car floats around and moves and rolls, there is a bigger unloading and loading between these two. Okay, this was your typical old Rayburn push-pull style thing I was talking about before. Both of these things were hooked to the chassis, and they would actually pivot so that they had a radius to them like this. So the springs in these things were very short and had very little... I guess gap between the coils so the difference between fully extended and fully compressed was only like three quarters of an inch maybe an inch I can't remember exactly what they were so any movement in here between here when this would get bigger or this would get bigger it would actually load against each other and then decrease the amount of free height and put a bind in here or they get closer together and actually take the preload out of them depending on the angle this was all set at. If the car rolled around it all or lifted up and squatted, these would actually loosen up or tighten up and put a bind in the car. Loosening up, the thing would slam and jerk and break the tires loose. If it tightened up and put the bind, it wouldn't let the car roll evenly and do what it wanted to do. That was the problem with these. If the free height on these springs were more so you could preload them more, this is a pretty good idea. It just not with those shorter springs and not with the amount of preload you could do in those things. It just it limited it. Like I said, if you could put a, a, a longer spring in there, softer probably, and preload it more, either way, so when this gap decreased or increased, it would keep tension on that deal, but yet it would never bottom out or put a bind in there. So this is kind of what I came up for the combined fifth coil and sixth coil thing. I had two big aluminum plates here, and actually this isn't a scale or anything, but the, the ch and then I had some chain, but the chains actually ran very close to the springs. I did this just for like a visual representation so we could see what I actually did easier. You'll have to figure out if you want to try experimenting with this, figure all this stuff out. I had some threaded rod here. This was threaded rod. And this is what I could actually use to preload the fifth and sixth coil kind of against each other. This was actually threaded in and was attached to the bottom cup here. So what happened is you could put preload on your fifth coil down here and it would have the stopper the typical deal here 
and then you would actually preload this into your six coil so then when this would go up this was your threaded adjuster nut it would go up and it would hit on here your spring and it would be a fifth coil but then when you adjusted this down it would actually pull down on your six coil so you could preload this thing against each other and you'd have one central pivot in the middle of your car the car could roll around and move around and would never bind up it would never free up it would never you never had a problem with it when you were done scaling you didn't have to preload one against each other if you move your fifth coil around you didn't have to adjust the preload this is a preset deal and you'd have to figure out because we still ran a seven inch shock in here so your spring heights aren't going to be 10 inches i think the bottom was a uh a six inch or an eight inch and the top was maybe a four inch or something and you have to figure all that out but that's kind of what we did and we made a central pivot out of a six coil and a fifth coil and they could you could preload it against each other if you like this video and you want to see more like it subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for notifications the notifications aren't anything spammy or anything like that it's just when you log into youtube they'll just say hey there's a new video up and you can check her out so subscribe and ring the bell and i'll see you in the next video